Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Kevin Wood. Um, Harry at Tycos as team leader. Um, I'm in Tycos. Um, when I joined Five More on a short term contract about nine years ago, um, it helped out for a short while. Um, to find out more about Ballbang, <coughs> Dan was the project manager uh, and I had a job that was involved in running the operations and other things. Where we get to today, is that Daniel does the wonderful things, he goes out and finds sources of money, grants and funding, all sorts of stuff, and then he passes the problems across to me as to how to make it work. Um, and I'll talk about some of those now. Um, right. What's the problem? Uh, if you're going to set yourself up as a community broadband network, or if you are in a community where you want broadband, um, and you don't have a service, and the service isn't good enough, Let's have a look at you know, what the problem is. Well, it's a numbers game. Government and other sources put money into projects. Um, the commercial providers focus on those areas where they can get the greatest return. Even if it's done on a social basis or it's funded by the likes of One North East, etc., it's a numbers game because people are measured by the returns they get, the number of people connected, etc. And so, therefore, what you tend to get, as we're all aware, is that the national coverage the marginal figures go up slightly, and the people who are outside of that see themselves moving further and further away from, the, uh, for, from actually getting the service. Um, the government's idea was to do the Britain report, uh, and their valid ambition was 25 megabits a second, uh, so-called next generation access. Hooray! <laughs> Practically, reality was that by the time the report was finished, it gone down to two megabits a second, the so-called UFC. Oh dear. Government changes, new ideas. BDUK comes along. Ray and Hope. <laughs> but actually the amount of money, 500 and something million pounds, it sounds huge, represents about 3% of the estimated cost to put fibre to every property in the UK. So about 3% are likely to get a better service. The problem, of course, is that the same thing as we started right at the top, it's a numbers game. The money will go into those areas where you can get the biggest bang for your buck, the most number of people connected, so that all the people who are ticking boxes and marking off their success rates will pick on those figures. So really, we've got to look at how can we solve it from a community point of view. So, finding a solution. Well, how long a bit of string you want? What is the solution? How can you do it? And what Cyborg is trying to do is to say, well, using the experience and expertise that we've built up over the last 10 years, we've come up with this term, raw bad in a box. Um, then we talked about the existing communities. This is where we started, also more. And he then talked about the other communities that we'd stepped out. The obvious reason for the funny shapes is that those are the valleys. So that we've, we've extended our services into the valleys, into areas where uh, most of those are the southern side of Northumberland, although we're in Cumbria, we are far away from the border. Um, the Northumberland County Council recognised that there were extreme parts of their county which they were never going to get to, and so we've worked with them over a number of years on a number of projects. Um, and then about two years ago, maybe, not, maybe last year, um, I got a call from uh, the been called the, uh, the Regional Development Authority, their equivalent of my North East down in the Midlands area. And they said, we have a problem. Um, we have a number of communities that we have funded for the last three years, and that funding is about <coughs> to expire. Um, some of the communities have managed to find themselves a way to become a community enterprise, they've joined other groups or whatever, but we have one community that we can do nothing with. Um, could you help? We've just heard about Cybermore and we've had a community meeting, and somebody's put their hand up and said, why can't we do what Cyborg's done? So Advantage West Midlands, that's the name I couldn't remember, Advantage West Midlands and said, could you help? And I said, well, how long have we got? And the woman said, it's the 27th of March, and it all gives up on the 31st. <laughs> Which happens to be good trade. So anyway, um, I talked to the people down there. They were very fortunate. They had a, uh, a technical specialist uh, actually go and work for the village, and between a lot of us and together with the people from Northgate who are presenting later on today uh, and the fact that some of the people at Northgate are unmarried so therefore they didn't mind working through Easter weekend etc. Um, 
but they managed to get it alive. And we have a small community down in a, a village called Heinford, which is not far from Oswald Street. Um, and since that time, we have been supporting them as a, as a rural community. They are part of Cyberwar. We do all of the management of services and things. We, do, we buy the services, we sell them to them, we manage the accounts and everything else. And the local guy down there works with technical people and we support him. Um, tools in the box, and I know I'm taking too long so I'll speed up a bit. Um, there are lots of things to be aware of. As I'm going through the presentation, if people here are thinking about a community broadband or thinking about something to do with this, please don't be put off for the amount of different things you need to be aware of. What we are trying to say is we will try and we'll work with you if it's something that you're interested in. But the sort of things that we're doing is evaluate the project. Well, I can't read it on the screen, is it? Um, the establishment support, how do you get your funding sorted out, community shares, Daniel talked about Cybermore Networks. That's the company which we are going to launch some community shares. We're going to go and raise money from the public with it. Um, how do you interface with the regional <coughs> excuse me? regional development authorities, parish councils, county councils, all those sorts of people, um, sort out the network, negotiate with landowners, how do you get permission to cross people's land? Um, very often these are farmers, farmers, you know, commercial companies, commercial businesses like other people, and their first instance is, you should come across my land, what's in it for me? Uh, and our attitude is a free broadband connection. And sometimes they accept that readily, and sometimes they take a bit of persuasion. Um, and then there's costs, obviously, to uh, uh, get involved with. Moving on to the access installation phase, we can help. We've got documentation from here. Material purchase, uh, go out competitive tender, installing the support, set up the servers, training, management, the administration. Um, operationally, we'll deal with this a little bit later, but there's lots of things that need to be involved in running the business. Because we are dealing with the customers, we have to follow all the legislation. The fact that we are a social enterprise, the fact that we are a very small organisation, the fact that we have limited funding so we don't have large numbers of people in our administration team, in fact we have one, um, we still have to carry all of these elements of being a member of Otello, that's the Office of Telecoms Ombudsman, so if somebody wants to complain, we have to have a formal process by which they can go through that, uh, that organisation. We're a registered internet service provider, so there's an annual fee regarding that. We're registered under the Data Protection Act. Um, we're an accredited partner with the local PCTs for the health service projects. If there are people in this room or you know of other communities who want to work on it, just because you're a tiny group or you're just starting doesn't actually mean you don't have to do all this lot. And what we're saying is we can provide an element of an umbrella organisation to take some of those burdens away from you. Um, health, you know, it may well be that it turns out the source of funding that you can get to build your, uh, your project forward is a function of the fact that the hospitals, are, you know, the doctors are going to suddenly become the, uh, the buyers of services within the health service. It may well be you've got an entrepreneurial uh, medical practice who says, well, we'd like to expand our services, we'd like to have some high speed broadband. We're willing to put some money in. That means that you've got to focus on the health service as one of the five prime deliverables, rather than getting you know, just people's connections. Um, I'll spend a couple of minutes talking about a project where we are currently helping them. Um, there is another social enterprise on the other side of Pennines in Weirdale, um, and it's there, it's based around Stanock, because that's where I live. Um, and for seven years I've been trying to get this off the ground, and I finally got the money, and so Cybermore's putting another project together. <laughs> and basically it's a typical ribbon community. That's the main road, the river goes up the river Weir, there's a bit of a railway line there. This was the site for a so-called eco-village, it used to be the cement works, but the funding for that's gone down the drain. Um, and that's where the BT connection is at Frostley, and so you get to Stanock and it's a reasonable uh, ABSL service and BT, and as you go further along here, there's virtually nothing, and I'll focus for a minute on that village of Rook up there. Um, it's a relatively large community, it's got a pub, it's got a village hall, it's got quite a lot of people, it's a big farming community. They have no mobile signal, they have virtually no broadband, they have a small amount of, of BT service. 
And so we are going to focus on starting with that, with that community to deliver them with a service. Um, in terms of what we've been doing, um, evaluation of the project, we put together some information from Sandoz, etc., to identify the not spots. Um, we work with the local council and the local paper to try and raise interest and find out how many people were, would be interested. We've had meetings with potential subscribers and we've talked to county and parish councils. Um, getting the company going, there are a number of different ways in which you can set your business up. They're all social enterprises. Company limited by guarantee, Industrial Provident Society, which is what Cyborg is, the new community interest company, they have different legal status, they have different <coughs> benefits, but if you, for example, decided that community shares, raising money from the community, is something which you want to use as part of your funding, you've almost got to be an Industrial Provident Society. So it's, it sounds as though you know, we're trying to sort of make you look forward, but sometimes the decisions that you take early on have an effect on the ability to raise funding, etc. later on. Um, 